Okay, in this lecture, I want to show you a quick and simple trick that you can use to overcome your mental barriers. And essentially, the reason why I made this lecture is because I want to give you something that you can use from the very beginning of this course. And essentially, what I'm going to show you in this lecture is one of the shortest possible paths to master your motivation. Of course, there's only so much I can teach you in one lecture, and so I definitely recommend that you do the whole course. Nevertheless, achieving significant progress after just one lecture is possible. And in this lecture, I want to help you to do that. So first of all, let's talk about the question, what is one of the best motivators that you could find? And one of the best motivators that you could find is simply experiencing success. If you want to lose weight and you find that you lost two or three or four pounds, that's extremely motivating. Or if you want to start a business and people are buying your product and loving your product, that's again extremely motivating. And it's also one of the best ways to shatter your self-limiting beliefs. If you believe that you can't do it and then you do it, there's nothing that shatters your self-limiting beliefs more effectively. But the tricky question is, how do we get ourselves active to get to that first success? And this is where we often get stuck. And one of the main reasons why we get stuck is because we start to overthink things. We start to imagine different scenarios. We start to wonder what could go wrong. And we start to wonder whether we are actually able to do this. And unfortunately, we have been trained to think this way. We have been sitting in school for a long time, paying attention to the mistakes we are making, asking ourselves the question whether what we are doing is the right thing to do. And unfortunately, now the reality is that these thoughts prevent us from getting active. So how do you break through these thoughts? And here's how you can approach this. The first part is to separate between thinking and acting. And essentially what that means is that you want to have a planning phase first, and that phase is for thinking, and then later you have an execution phase which is purely for doing. And in that execution phase, you want to avoid thinking as much as possible. So for example, if you want to lose weight, you could make the plan to go to the gym tomorrow at 9 a.m. and run on a treadmill for 30 minutes. And then once it's 9 a.m. and you go to the gym, you're not allowed to change that plan anymore. All you need to focus on at this point is on executing that plan. Or let's say that you want to do some work or work on your business. Then again, you plan first what you're going to do. For example, you decide that tomorrow at 8 p.m. I'm going to create a landing page for my business. And then tomorrow at 8 p.m., you simply execute that plan. And you try to avoid rethinking that plan as much as possible. You focus purely on execution. Okay, so the first step is to separate between thinking and acting by having a planning phase first and an execution phase later. Of course, I can tell you from experience that this is easier said than done. Because what's likely going to happen is that self-limiting thoughts that slow you down and want to keep you from getting active will pop up anyways in the execution phase. And so a key aspect of this approach is to train yourself in ignoring every self-limiting thought. And let's talk for a moment about the question why this is actually difficult. And the main reason why it's difficult is because for us, it's already difficult to even identify a self-limiting thought. To us, having these thoughts feels so normal, and actually very often these thoughts feel so reasonable and so necessary to think, that it feels completely unnatural to ignore this thought. So here's some examples. Let's take the thought, will this work? Will this work is an excellent question because you need to know that what you're doing actually works, but it's an excellent question for the planning phase and not for the execution phase. So if that question pops up during the execution phase, try to ignore it. Another example is the thought, is this the right thing to do? Again, a very important question, but for the planning phase. In the execution phase, that thought is just going to slow you down. So ignore it. Another example is the thought, is there something better I could do? There's always something better that you could do. But in the end, you just need to do something. So you can ask that question in the planning phase, but definitely ignore it in the execution phase. Another example is, is now the right time? No time is ever perfect. Decide on one time during the planning phase and then treat that as fixed during the execution phase. And finally, a very typical example of a self-limiting thought is every thought that starts with, but what if? What if it doesn't work? What if it rains on Sunday? Every thought that starts with, 
what if is basically about a problem that hasn't even occurred yet. It's about a fictitious scenario. And for all you know, that problem may never occur and you never need to solve it. So why bother with it so much? So you definitely want to ignore this kind of thought during the execution phase. And you may also want to ignore it during the planning phase. So the key here is to police yourself and ask yourself, does this thought help me to get active? And very often if the thought is a question, does this work? What if? If it's a question, then most of the time what this thought will simply do is make you sit down and think about it. And that's exactly what you want to prevent. You want to train yourself in paying attention to thoughts that help you get active and ignore thoughts that make you sit down and think instead of acting. And I'm not going to lie, the first time you try this, it's probably going to be a little bit difficult. But the more you practice this, the better you get at this. This is really a skill. And the more often you do it, the easier it will get. And it can also help to keep in mind that everybody has self-limiting thoughts to some degree. Nobody is completely free of doubts. But some people are better at ignoring these doubts and separating them from their actions. And you can master that skill too by practicing it. And the more you practice it, the easier it will get to stay active, to make progress, and sooner or later you will experience your first success. And when that happens, things will get a lot easier. So to sum it up, separate between thinking and acting by having a planning phase first and then an execution phase. And in the execution phase, you want to ignore all thoughts that make you want to sit down and think and instead focus on acting as much as possible. So this is the quick trick to break through your mental barriers. Of course, there are still a lot of questions that remain open at this point, such as what if you just don't have the momentum to get started? How do you build up that momentum? Or how do you create an effective plan in the planning phase? Or what do you do if it takes a while to get to your first success? How do you make sure that you stay motivated? And to address these questions and more, I created the six steps motivation program that you're going to start with after this lecture. So now that you know how to break through your mental barriers, let's get started with the full program in the next lecture.